Welcome back to Wine and Chill, your home for all things millennial adulting and entertainment law legal shenanigans. Now that we've expanded, I have to remember that. <laughs> I'm Stephanie, your friendly neighborhood lawyer. Well, as you already know, not your lawyer, which brings me quickly to our disclaimer. By watching this video, you understand that this video is for entertainment purposes only, and you acknowledge and consent that you have read the full disclaimer below in the description box. Today is Wednesday, our second installment of Widen Lawsuits Wednesdays, where I will give you three to four lawsuits for you to choose from. So to clarify, I didn't clarify last time. So this Wine and Lawsuits Wednesday will always occur every Wednesday. And um, I'm gonna try to keep on schedule. So as long as you guys vote by Fridays, then the video that you voted on for the long form will be our legal shenanigans, our regular legal shenanigans series, and will come out the following Monday or Sunday. I know, me trying to stick to a YouTube schedule. I'm gonna do it for y'all. So Wednesdays, we're keeping to Wednesdays. We have our summary videos. Mondays will be our long form legal shenanigans video. Um, so last week you guys voted for, it was like an even-ish split with more for Dominion, but a lot of you saying if you could vote for two, you wanted to see Nicki Minaj versus um, Tracy Chapman. So that video is live that I posted on Monday and Dominion, versus Sydney Powell should probably come out this weekend, depending how the internets are acting. I'm just gonna be honest because child, the translucent trolls, I don't have the patience for them in my old age. Y'all remember the comments on the Michigan lawsuit? But anyways, so Sundays will then just be a catch all of like millennial adulting or whatever legal random shenanigans if you guys, if I gave you guys two videos, will be on Sundays, cool? So we are set with our schedule. So today we are gonna delve into the unreal world of reality TV. So all of our lawsuits, it just happens to be themed today. I don't think every wine and lawsuits Wednesday will be themed, but this one just happened to be themed. And they all happen to have one thing in common, reality television. So the first one being Khloe Kardashian and her clothing company, Good American, allegedly stealing from a black designer. Hmm. There's no surprise on my face. Then we're going to go to Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, Erica Jane and her husband, and him and his law firm allegedly stealing and embe allegedly embezzling money from plane crash victims. I'll probably finish this glass of wine with today's, what we're talking about today. Who, who does, you know what? We're gonna get there to who allegedly does these things. And then last but not least, Bravo TV, allegedly stealing the show Married to Medicine from its creator, Mariah Huck. Might as well call this episode alleged thievery because that's all we're about to talk about. So starting with Klo Klo herself. So Miss Kardashian is being sued for $10 million by Destiny Blue, the owner of D Blue Dazzled. She is a black designer, great designs, we're gonna look at them. Um, and she is suing for five claims, specifically being one, fraud and deceit, two, common law trade dress infringement, three, misappropriation, four, California statutory unfair competition, and five, common law unfair competition. So what had happened was, Miss Destiny made her bodysuit, her glitter bodysuit, which I'm gonna show you on the screen. And um, Clo Clo decided to order a few of these bodysuits to look at them. Then, according to the complaint, Good American then released its own version of bedazzled bodysuits to which Destiny was a bit taken aback as to how they look very similar to hers. Case in point, let me inch over. Case in point. In typical Chloe um, fashion, she took to Instagram to post and say she was inspired by Cher. Child, <clears throat> how are you going to order it from somebody and then magically be inspired by somebody else and then release it? I think this video would be, if we did this video, so if you voted for number one, back to our game show voice, if you vote for number one, we're going to talk, it's going to be a good segue into fashion law. We haven't done anything with fashion law, um, particularly about trademark. What can you trademark? What is within the bounds of trademark? Trademark is very specific. Can you trademark bedazzling? We can talk about that. Um, and then what are some of the challenges that fashion designers face? 
we live in a world full of fast fashion and knockoffs. So as a designer, what are some of the challenges that various designers face, particularly, you know, a lot of black designers get ripped off. It's everywhere, it's happening. So good for Destiny for holding to it. So earlier this year, the judge ruled against Khloe Kardashian. She was, and so this case is proceeding. So if you guys wanna talk about that. Also, if you wanna know more about this case, the fashionlaw.com, is that what it's called? Yeah, the fashionlaw.com has been following this case since the inception. They do a great write-up, um, a great play-by-play -play of what's happening, what defenses are being used, why the judge is ruling for or against such said defenses. Um, highly recommend that. I will link their blog in the description box as well. Also go support a black owned business and go buy a bodysuit. Maybe I'll buy one just to wear it in my house because you know, we still not going outside in New York. <sighs> Next, we are gonna talk about Erica Jane from Real Housewives of Beverly Hills and her husband, Thomas Girardi. Cha, pour your wine. Now, this was on my slate to do in December, which was a month ago. And since December, in a mere short month and a half, this lawsuit has escalated itself into a family tree of lawsuits, if you may. So we're gonna do a quick rundown. So there are multiple lawsuits going on between Erica Jane and her husband, divorce. She is divorcing him. I'm saying it that way because one of the lawsuits is alleging that the divorce is a sham. Ciao. Pour the wine. Um, bankruptcy, um, the husband and his law firm, he's a lawyer, are now in bankruptcy court. As of yesterday, being forced into chapter seven, liquidation, as in selling off his assets to pay his creditors. But the big one, and the one we're gonna look at for a second, is the alleged fraud. Let us pull it up. So you know how we usually, when we do full on legal shenanigans, entertainment law shenanigans, we start with the beginning because the beginning is always spicy and I love a spicy writer. Well, this one does not disappoint. So we're gonna start with paragraph one, just to walk through it really quick. Tom Girardi, Tom referred to here and as, as Tom or Girardi and his law firm, Girardi Keys, are on the verge of financial collapse and locked in a downward spiral of mounting debts and dwindling funds. Mind you, complaints are all allegations, so of course, the plaintiff's attorney wrote it in a searing manner. They presently owe tens of millions of dollars to clients, lenders, co-counsel, settlement administrators, and experts, to name only a few, and have tried in vain to forestall the payment of those debts with hollow promises, excuses, mixed direction, and outright fraud. Ooh, it's an alleged scammer. It gets better. Paragraph two, at the heart of the deception is defendant Girardi and his need to fund outrageous lifestyles for himself and his soon to be ex-wife, Erica Jane. Now, when you are the star of a reality show, you are gonna show your lifestyle, which Miss Jane's lifestyle, not allegedly, you can look at Real Houses Beverly Hills for yourself, included or includes, I'm, I'm not sure if she's still retaining these people, hairdresser, stylist, makeup artists that flew with her and attended events with her. And in one episode, they all went to Dubai because honey, she had to look good. Who paid for this? Paragraph three. As a result, and most egregiously, Tom has resorted to embezzling the proceeds of settlements that should have been directed to his clients. Child, that's a disbarment allegation including as the basis for this complaint, the widows and orphans who lost loved ones in the tragic crash of Lion Air Flight 610, it's the Boeing flight, in order to continue funding his and Erica's lavish Beverly Hills lifestyle. One more sentence and then we're gonna talk about this. Paragraph four, while Erica publicly filed for divorce this month on information and belief that quote unquote divorce is simply a sham attempt to fraudulently protect Tom and Erica's money from those that seek to collect on debts owed by Tom and his law firm GK. Oh, Jesus. You allegedly stole from who? Why? Who does that? So if you vote for number two, there's nothing funny about this. Oh, the first time I read it, I was just like, what the fuck? Ooh, excuse my language. 
This is why people think attorneys are awful people because of people like this. So to speed up what's happened in the past month, because this case is still ongoing, Tom then claimed in court documents that he was broke. He didn't have the money. To which the court said as of yesterday, oh, you broke? Mm, that's cute. Bankruptcy filing chapter seven, liquidate all your money as the court is trying to find the millions of dollars that he allegedly embezzled. He then to this claimed that he was incompetent. A renowned attorney then proceeded to claim, actually, um, you know, I'm not here. I'm not here, you know, I'm not really here. And um, I can't stand trial for that because I'm incompetent. If you are declared incompetent, you are legally allowed to not, you legally do not have to stand trial as the court is not allowed to litigate against an incompetent person. Excuse? Oh, Jesus. So yeah, um, I don't know where we would start with that, web of hot mess express but if you vote for number two it will be an interesting video of us trying to untangle how hmm hmm mess mess all right which brings us to number three our last one for you guys to vote on which a few of you asked for this i'm um, stephanie i know you asked stephanie morrow i know when i say stephanie it's like why are you talking about yourself in the third person <laughs> And then someone else asked as well. I need to do better at taking these screenshots because I forget. But yes, thank you. Bravo is getting sued yet again for, you know, keeping with the theme of Tiffin, which is the theme for today's episode. Bravo is being sued for allegedly stealing the show and concept Married to Medicine from the creator of the show, Mariah Huck. This was originally brought to light and posted by All About The Tea. So I tried to make sure to give people credit from where I see it from as well, um, which she did a great video. She has a interview with Mariah previously from I believe like June, the background of Mariah saying like, hey, like something's not right, something's not right. And then she as well did cover the lawsuit. So if you guys want to head over to her channel and see what she talked about, so you can kind of see what we would talk about if we um, did a, if you guys chose this video. So basically, Mariah Huck created the show and she is suing Bravo, NBC, purveyors of pop and Fremantle for five claims. Yep. Yeah. So breach of contract, breach of joint venture agreement, which we're going to get into what that is, breach of the covenant of good faith and fair dealing, failure to prevent retaliation, harassment and unauthorized exploitation of married to medicine and married to medicine, the series. Something to talk about breach of joint venture agreement, which is something new for you guys because we've done breach of contract a few times. So a joint venture agreement is a contract between two or more separate entities or parties, which make an agreement to pool all of their resources to achieve a specific goal or task. Each party is responsible for profits, losses, and costs associated with it. So a joint venture agreement in this instance is most likely between NBC herself, um, Bravo, and them pooling money to create Married to Medicine joint the specific the specific case of joint venture agreements is they have an expiration date once you meet the end goal the joint venture itself which generally sometimes can be a separate entity dissolves that's how it works it's interesting that she is suing for this and as the creator it definitely makes sense so before all of this she was listed as one of the executive producers of the show they have now according to mariah pushed her out of her own show which she created what is going to be interesting in the response is going to be bravo basically saying let's do a throwback way back um when we did the kanye case like forever ago one of the big things that I always tell people and the big thing when it comes to contracts, there are always termination rights. So she's suing for breach of contract saying like, hey, you were supposed to do all these things. Like I'm the executive producer. I'm supposed to, you know, have these, I'm supposed to have these certain things in here. I'm supposed to be on the show, whatever you breach this. Most likely Bravo and the other parties will come back and say, oh, we canceled her contract because she is actually in breach of contract for etc. So it's going to be a battle of that. I think um, what's unfortunately it will likely settle, all these things settle. But I think what's interesting about this case and what will be interesting to see from Rai's perspective and to see as this case furthers along, what happens when she made the show? 
She created the show. She had the idea. She pulled together all the people. She pitched the show. What are your rights when you create and own a show? What rights do you sign over? What what was guaranteed to her and what did they not do? The retaliation claim is interesting. Bravo has other lawsuits, other Bravo liberties. Um, noticeably, Nene Leaks also sued Bravo, suing Bravo there in the middle of a lawsuit. This is different from that in that Mariah is the creator, as in this is her intellectual property. She created this idea. How much of this idea can she continue to control if she's getting pushed out? Um, and I think it's great. I think it's great. I'm not, the lawsuit is not great. <laughs> I think it's great that she is advocating for herself because oftentimes you see black creatives, um, black people in general, but double creatives, black creatives often get pushed out of their own work because people are like, oh, I don't wanna deal with you anymore. Like, okay, I have it. I have the money, I have this, I have that. Like, what do I need you for? So good for her, for her standing up. It will be very interesting to see how this plays out. So if you vote for number three, most likely we're gonna focus on the ownership aspect. If you do number three, we're gonna focus on the ownership aspect um, because that's something we haven't covered. We've covered discrimination. Um, and I think the ownership aspect adds a very interesting layer to that. So, you know, I always like to include stuff so you guys can protect yourselves as well, since a lot of you are creative in some way. So yeah, I forgot. I didn't research a funny one this week, my bad, sorry. But you can let me know in the comments if there is a funny lawsuit that you saw that is nonsensical and it's just funny to you. I told you I was going to drink the whole thing. It was this alleged stealing from victims' families for me. I was like, oh no, this is not for sobriety. Mm -mm, mm -mm. All right, with that, go ahead and let me know. Vote one, two, or three for which ones you want, which are number one will be Sea Blue Dazzled versus Khloe Kardashian slash Good American. Number two will be, oh my mind, something else these days. <laughs> number two will be Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, Erica Jane and her husband, Thomas Girardi versus, child versus a lot of people because this is a hot mess. Ooh. Mm -mm. And I thought my student loans were bad. They owe a shit ton of money to people. Wild. And then lastly will be Mariah Huck um, versus Bravo, NBC, Purveyors of Pop, and Fremantle. So let me know in the comments which ones you want to vote for. And then today's Wednesday. As long as you guys vote by Friday, Saturday, maybe the video should come out on Monday. And I'm very open for y'all to, you know, kind of nudge me if it's not on time. And as usual, thank you for watching. If you haven't already, please go ahead, like, subscribe, and let me know which video you want to see. This is the first. I haven't drank it all in a while. <laughs>